Hi everyone, my name is Luke Junkie and today we're back on a new project. Um, this is going to be going over, I think, probably roughly four or five uh, episodes. So a short kind of little series in which we're going to be developing an AI. Um, so not an incredibly intelligent one, um, but it is, it's one that um, develops almost as it evolves. Um, so this is kind of the stuff we'll be doing. So as you can see, there's lots of dots, and they have to try and make it to this kind of finish without going the obstacles, and it keeps doing it until it gets to the most efficient solution. Um, so this is the kind of AI we're going to be uh, using. Uh, it takes a little while to do, but I'll show it back in a minute. Now, the beauty of this project is we're only going to be using one object and one room, and the room itself has literally just the object in, there is nothing else there. So it means it is very efficient. Um, there is quite a lot of code in this object, so we'll, that's what we'll take a little bit of time to do. There is lots of variables going on, and it was it is using arrays. Um, alternatively, you could use grids, but it's entirely up to you. But if you don't know any of them, then it's probably worth going back and watching some of our previous videos on that. Um, but just before we start, as well. I'll just see how this is doing. Yeah, you can see it's started to evolve uh, and the seconds are starting to tick down so it's starting to get quicker and quicker each time um, and you can see each one will get slightly quicker until eventually it finds the most efficient pattern. Um, so we'll leave that running for the, the contents of this video. Um, I would also quite like to thank CodeBullet for this brilliant video and um, the whole channel really because it really helped me uh, explain or learn how to code AIs and stuff. Uh, even though this was done in Java and something called processing, it is a very similar example. So if you're more into Java stuff, I would definitely recommend going and doing this. But if you're like me, based in Game Maker, um, this is definitely something you want to watch and do because it does take a completely like different coding approach to it. So it uses instead of the objects which it uses in processing this uses sprites so it's slightly more efficient you could say um, you can have more obstacles you can have more um, creatures as I've called them going on at once and you can see it is getting more efficient um, there is a lot of code in this so this will be well I've already said that but it, the content is probably going to be at a intermediate pushing on advanced level um, especially uh, this kind of code um, is, is pushing into um, almost a level maths um, kind of level so the the maths in it will also be quite tricky um, and the coding will not be easy so it is it is something less beginner level so I'll, I'll try and explain it as much as possible and we'll make sure to put lots of comments and stuff in to um, make sure you know it but it will be it will require a certain level of basic intelligence to start with so you will have to know about arrays um, variables switch events I don't think we've really done much on switch events before um, but they're gonna be key uh, they're not that hard I'll probably explain them as we go into them um, what else we need to know? We're not going to use anything in the terms of scripts and stuff. They're completely out of it, so don't worry about any of that stuff. Um, obviously, arrays. Arrays is the main thing. So if you don't know anything about arrays, definitely go over um, that and, and check that out. So you can see we are getting very quick. Um, so if we started off at seven seconds, we've basically half that now. So you can see the system starts off with one batch of AIs and scatters them randomly um, with lots of random directions and the one that makes it first gets passed on to the next generation. Now the next generation the movements are slightly randomized from the last generation's winner. So think of it almost as natural selection in that the most fittest of the first batch is being passed on to the next lot and slightly mutated um, so you get this kind of circular pattern around the previous one so it means if one of these cuts a corner a little bit more then that's going to be slightly more efficient um, and that's going to do it a little bit so this, this takes a long time this version um, 
the version we're going to be using is a little bit simpler uh, in essence but it is the same thing um, we're just going to use this so there's less dots um, it takes a little bit more time but overall it does it a lot quicker because there is no obstacles in the way so you can see oh there we go it's found the quickest so it's 2.37 seconds so it started off at 7 and now it's got to 2.37 if we run it for longer we would get more efficient because you can see it kind of flutters around a bit there but it doesn't make that big of a difference that it um, decides to change the route now if we go back to this one you can see this is on iteration 8 um, 9 it's, it's going to be almost there so this is the one we're going to be doing just because it takes a lot less time to test early on uh, if you start adding obstacles early it makes it very hard because um, there is only a small chance it will catch the first time, it'll, the only first time it will reach the destination. So it does take a lot more time if you start off with obstacles, it's much easier if you build this kind of version first and then build on top of that with the obstacles. Um, that's what I found anyway, I'm pretty sure that's that makes sense. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll just wait until this is done and it, we should see it go in a straight line eventually. Um, Actually, I I don't think this no this this version sorry we won't see it going straight on because this version doesn't have a finish technique it doesn't have any way of stopping so this one will go on forever and ever and ever until it's found ultimately the most efficient way uh, but it will just keep going so we won't actually see a solution for that we will when we code it we will add in that um, solution kind of code bit. Um, and that's based on times, so the amount of time it takes to get from the start to the finish, the one in the least amount of time um, is the winner. But yeah, that is going to be this kind of AI series that we're going to build on. Um, I'm personally really excited for it. It's something I've wanted to do for quite a while, but I just never really had the time to do. Uh, or the knowledge, actually. The knowledge has kind of recently come from CodeBullet. Um, but yeah, if you... Um, are ready for the series so remember to like subscribe what you guys want to do and i'll talk to you in the next one